Hey guys, this is Kino with the Austin GT uh, here in Austin. And I've been hanging out with Sean uh, quite a bit for the last two days and we saved something before he left town. And as you see in his hand, these are air filters. We're gonna replace the air filters on my 720 uh, S Spider. And I'm gonna show you why I'm not the one doing it this time. It's gonna be Sean. Sean? So these filters, I got these for the 3.8 liter cars as well as the four liter like is in the 720S. Uh, these do not require any oil, which some of the aftermarkets do. Uh, these do not. When you oil the filters, it can cause problems with the mass airflow sensor. We don't want that happening. Uh, so these, no oil. They have fantastic filtration capabilities, just like the factory filters. But also, these fit correctly. There are aftermarket, uh, like BMC, that don't fit correctly, and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Uh, but these filters I've had made for them, they work fantastic. I put them on my own car, you get a little more turbo sound, which who doesn't want more turbo sound? Uh, so, I know a guy. Yeah. So I use these in my own cars. Uh, I've been doing these for about three years now and they work fantastic. They are reusable, washable. Uh, so these are the last set you're ever gonna have to buy. First things first, we've got to take the wheel off. Now this is going to be a 17 millimeter. I do recommend using uh, any of the sockets that have the nylon or something on here to protect it so you don't damage the wheel. I like using an impact. Uh, this particular impact has an auto function so when it starts to spin out, uh, it senses that and then it stops spinning it really fast. That can be helpful in not stripping these out. If you're not comfortable with that, you don't have as fancy of an impact, you can do it by hand nothing wrong with that. These are 96 foot pounds, so if you don't think you have enough leverage with a, uh, a regular ratchet, definitely use a breaker bar. That's gonna give you the leverage to get these things off. Now you may notice that I actually left all of these lugs kind of sitting in place because that's how I'm gonna keep track of them and not lose them. The wheel is sitting on the hub, so the wheel isn't gonna fall off. If you have some aftermarket wheels that are balanced funny, they might fall off, so be aware of that. But the factory ones, they stay right on. Now we get into the fender liner. There are two halves to this. The front half we can leave here. The back half, we've got two Phillips head screws and the rest of these should be T30s unless somebody has replaced them with something that shouldn't be. Now these Phillips screws that are in here are made of plastic. So you don't wanna to be too aggressive with power tools uh, at all on these, particularly putting them in, but even taking them out can be a bit of a problem if you try to spin them real fast. So I recommend doing these by hand, both in and out. Once we pop the pins loose, so you don't have to pull them all the way out. Pop them loose, move the whole piece down, wrap it around the parking brake there, and ta-da, it is out. Now we've got the ECU. Uh, on one side we have the ECU, on the other side we have the TCU. That's for the engine and the transmission. You do not have to unplug them you can simply unbolt them. There are three screws. They are T25s. Now with this loose, we can just kind of set that to the side and we're going to see five different eight millimeter screws that are in these. They all go straight up. Here's our box right here. All right, now that we've got, presuming both of these fender liners out uh, on each side, again, only the back half has to come out. Uh, that's going to loosen up three of the screws that are in the diffuser. Then we've got one more uh, over here on the front side. So we're gonna get that guy out. Now we've got 14 of them across the bottom. They're all visible. And then these four 
that we also need to take off because we're going to remove the diffuser to gain access to the other bolts that are actually what holds in the airbox or holds the filter on the airbox. So pulling these out. Now I'm going to very strategically leave one of these middle screws in and I'll show you why in a minute. So now that I've removed all of the other screws, you can see why I left the one in there. I left the one in the middle to hold the, the whole thing up. This can be a one man job. Just take all the other ones out. It stays up on its own. Then we can remove the last bolt. And one person can just pull it right off. If you notice, I am using a very long extension and for one of these, we're gonna use a universal. This is an eight millimeter. And the reason we're using universal is because it's kind of at a funny angle. So if we get it up in there, it might be a little bit of a chore. And we have got four more. So the next one we're going to go to is this one right over here. Then the next one in line, right here. Another one right here. And on this last one, uh, you might know that I have been using a wobble extension. You can also just use a shorter extension to get into this last one here. Now with all five screws out, all we gotta do is take the cover off and there is little notches that it sits up on this end. So we've just gotta push it this way and then it will come down. This is the factory filter. All you have to do is friction fit, pull it right out. So these are the two filters. This one's the factory one. This is the new one. The factory one, this is on a 3,800 mile car and it's uh, a little bit dirty. It's not horrible, uh, but you can tell there is a little bit of grime in it. Um, this is original to the car. Uh, so this is a 2021 filter. Uh, these don't really degrade over time. Uh, they just get dirty from normal use. Uh, if you wanted to get one of these factory filters, you can get them from a dealer. Uh, we are in uh, Austin right now, so the nearest dealer to here would be Houston. Uh, so again, if you wanted to have them do this job, they could do it as well, but we're in Austin, so we're three hours away. It's a little bit more convenient, that's why I'm here. So we're gonna change this filter, and this is going to be a friction fit in. However, there's something else we're going to do before I put this filter in, and that is get rid of the foam. To remove all this foam, it's pretty easy. Grab and pull. It's held in by little retainer clips and everything will just kind of pull off around it. You see it's a little bit dusty, but not bad. If you've got them where they're actually crumbling apart, uh, you'll actually find fragments of it in your filters, uh, but also they will just completely disintegrate in your hands as you're taking it apart. And make sure you get all of it up in there it's only around the outside. It's not tucked way up in there weird. You can see all of it. Pretty easy to get to. Pull that stuff out. And then we're going to put the new filter in, which is friction fit only. Now, remember what I mentioned about the BMC filters. These sit there. You remember how the factory ones, when I pulled them out, they were sitting there. These just sit there. The BMCs do not fit correctly. They don't stay there. It requires two people. One person to hold the filter there. Another one to grab your cover box, which you can see, this just butts right up to the filter and that's what holds it in place. So yeah, once it's up in there, it's there, but it takes two people to finagle it. 
with the other filters. These do not. So we've got little clips up here. Again, you saw those when we pulled them out. Those line right up, and now we can put the screws back in. Now for putting these screws back in, they're not very big and they're going into inserts in plastic. You do not want to over torque these things. It doesn't take that much torque at all. Seven foot pounds at max. It really doesn't have to be that much. I am using this tool to put them in, but I also know how to modulate the trigger on it. So I'm only gonna put them in just to where they snug up and that's it. If you feel you should put them in by hand cause that's you know, where you can get some feel on it, do that. Other thing to point out, whenever you go to start these, maybe if you're doing it with a tool, start it just a little bit at first to make sure that you're not cross-threading it. Uh, these don't typically do that, but you know, it can happen. We're gonna start with the one that's on the inside at the far back and get it lined up, put the screw in. And the reason for that is if you get this one lined up, the other ones are much easier to get in there. So we're gonna start from this back end and then work our way towards the inside of the car. Those will get those lined up pretty easily. Remember on this last one, we've got the swivel head and that can be a little bit difficult to manage. Uh, so the way that I do it is I try to get it at an appropriate angle where I can kind of stuff it right in the spot at the appropriate angle, put the screw in there and just kind of fish it up there carefully. A note on the driver's side, the TCU that you have to remove actually has eight millimeter bolts. But again, all three of them are visible. You can see it. Now a note on putting the screws back in, both on the TCU and the ECU, again, those are small screws. Start them by hand a little bit to make sure they're threaded before you go powering on it. And uh, they don't have to be crazy tight. Just get them snug, they're fine. Now for putting this diffuser back on, one person can do it. Two people, doesn't hurt, but one person can do it. And if you notice, there's these little holes right here and there are these bolts right here. That's where those go through. So you can kind of line those up uh, as an easy spot, but we're gonna take one screw in hand. Remember how we took it back out. That's how we're going back in. So we're gonna line up those spots right there. Hold that up, one screw, we're gonna do it by hand and just get it as far as you can in by hand. You don't have to tighten it yet. And that will stay there on its own. Before we put the rest of these screws in, we're gonna put them all in loosely. If you tighten any one of them, they might not go back in, line up quite right. So put them all in loosely, do these last. Once you get two of these in here tightened up, you'll know the other ones will go. So get those all tightened up, these all tightened up, and you're all back together. Now, when putting these wheels back on, I have to leave all the nuts in there, all the lugs in there. And then you can do it on the rear wheels, but not the front. If you kind of put one thumb on one of them and twist it, then you'll feel it drop right in the hole. Then you know it's lined right up. Now I am gonna use this impact to put it in. However, I'm going to put on the absolute lowest setting and I'm only gonna go till it gets resistance in like one click. 
and that way it's going to pull it snug in there, but it's not going to torque it. And the other thing that can happen, which is why you don't use an impact at full bore on it, is there are accelerometers in the wheels. And if you use an impact where it's constantly vibrating it, it can break those sensors. They're expensive. You don't want to have to replace those. So just go until it just snugs it right up, gets one little click, then we'll go back and torque the wheels. This is set to 96 foot pounds and we do have an extension on it or you can get one of these in an extra long. You're going to need that to not hit the bodywork or get your hand jammed up against the wheel. You may also notice that I've gone in a star pattern, both when I originally put them in and for torquing it. And that's so we make sure that the wheel is perfectly flat against the hub and it's not going to be wobbly or anything like that. Uh, so we make sure it's absolutely flat and perfect because otherwise you will notice when you first drive it, the car will shake like mad. All right, Sean, it looks like we're wrapping this up. You finished, I estimate about two hours, but you've done this a lot. So what do you think uh, someone at home trying to do this maybe on jack stands or is it possible to do on jack stands? You can absolutely do it on jack stands. Um, it's, I generally expect to take about an hour and a half when I do it because I know what I'm doing going in. But if you've got to find the screws that thing, it take a little bit longer, but then you factor in uh, time to jack it up and get it on the jack stands. Yeah, it might take you a little bit longer. So plan on two hours. Um, you know, maybe if you're doing really on the spot, you can get it in an hour and a half, but plan on two hours. Two hours. All right. We're wrapping this up. Thank you for taking care of this. And you'll be back in Austin in a quarter or so? Every three months. I'll post all of Sean's information when this video will also be posting on your channel as well. Well, thank you guys for tagging along with us. We'll see you next time.